Hey guys, Ken Smith. This is part two of this week's Raven Report. If you didn't see part one, it's right there. It is, uh, so I started out shallow. I caught 31 fish in about three and a half hours. Just kind of a smack fest. Caught them really good early, right up against the bank in a shad spawn. And when that bite shut down, I started backing out and I started looking. The cool thing about this is I caught this group of fish in a hard spot I've never hit before. I have fished all around this area, but I've never found this hard spot before. I want to give you a map cutaway part of the way through this to show you what this looks like so you can find something similar. I think there's specific spots on most lakes, this is not Rayburn specific, that these places show up on because of the way the current flows. So I'll show you that part of the way through this. Uh, so let's go to some fishing, but again, this is a spot I found. It took me probably, I'm going to say 45 minutes of not getting bit till I found this spot. And when I did, you see I spot lock and we talk about this, I've got that cast dialed in and I started spanking on them pretty good. Mostly smaller fish, but I caught a pretty good one in here too. So let's check this out. Next cast. That is the key to knowing the angle of the cast you made. I had that lined up when I went when I reeled down to set the hook on that first fish. I looked to see where the boat was, I hit spot lock, and I looked to see exactly where that line was pointed so I could make that exact same cast again. I cannot, I talk about this all the time. I talk about this all the time. It's so important, A, to use your spot lock, but B, to know, pay attention to where that line, where that cast is lined up. So you can make that same cast again they usually are not out here by themselves. really really strong okay I kind of wanted to show you all the type of point I was fishing so this is uh, this is obviously Sam Rayburn I am uh, just out on the main lake so you see uh, 147 bridge up there that's mud that's 147 bridge uh, and then as I zoom in I'm actually kind of in the corner of the forest right here and so that's a typical main lake point, right? It's a point that runs out into the lake. But what I have found is the points that look more like that one, the ones that run parallel to the current, if you will. So up lake is this way, and then down lake's back down this way. And what I have found is when you find those points where the current has come down the side of them like that, a lot of times the good hard spots are off the side of those points as opposed to on the end of those points. And part of the reason for that, I believe, is that current over years and years has washed that sand off the top of that clay and or those rocks. And that's what makes those hard spots. And a lot of times I think that's why those better fish 
uh, like to stack up on those places. And again, you're looking for hard spots. Uh, I would say typically, and there's another good one out there closer to the river, by the way. So the river would be at the top right of this screen right now. Uh, and what I'll tell you is a lot of times, uh, I think these types of points were quite a bit letter, better, the upstream side of these points, than these main lake points that stick straight out into the lake. And, you know, there's another good one right there that would have current coming around it. And they're certainly better than these downstream points because they don't get as much current on them. So I'd much rather fish that upstream point than that downstream point. I think you're going to more often find really good hard bottoms on these type places than on those downstream type, type places. So hopefully that helps, guys. Four casts in a row I've been bit. fish was out here deeper than the rest of those fish. Boat sitting in 21 feet of water. That fish was right under the boat. I was just about to reel it up and dunk. He said, nope, no, I'm, I want to eat that. And I said, I right, then. Tell you what, I got an order. I got an order from Taco Warehouse to do. But I'll hook here tomorrow because I am out of baby brush on this. Is, I'm trying every, every other color. And of course, you know, I'm not a huge color nut, as long as it's green pumpkin y, watermelon y. And this color water, probably more green pumpkin. My favorite's watermelon candy, but I'm out of those. So I'm throwing some kind of green pumpkin with some blue in it. Ooh, that's shallow cross there, brother. is but that's bad you're driving right across where i'm throwing that's unbelievable why would you do that i mean he drove he saw me out he saw me out here he drove off he couldn't he could have gone around me that's frustrating man that's frustrating so right over i mean literally over the top of where i was cast
better fish. It's a nice fish right there. Okay, so what I just did there was I'm catching those fish on a Carolina rig and they quit biting the Carolina rig. I literally had a guy drive over the top of these fish and they quit biting the rig. They might have quit biting it anyway. You saw I got a little frustrated. I try not to show you all that very often when I do, but I did. But I immediately picked up a crankbait. Now, you guys know I'm a six cents guy. That's the bait I'm going to throw 70, 80% of the time. But as I told the six cents folks when I came to an agreement with them, I'm a tournament guy. I am not just a YouTube guy. I fish for money and I fish for trophies. Trophies to me are more important than the money, but I fish to win. So I am not only going to throw one brand of bait. I want to throw whatever brand of bait I feel like I got the best chance to get bit on. In this case, it was a pretty shallow spot. It was a real flat point that fell off real hard. I picked up a 6XD and when those fish quit biting, I got them to fire on that 6XD, but I caught little tiny fish. So I picked up that bigger Cloud 15, which is a bigger body bait, and you see I made that cast up there with that Cloud 15, and whack, I caught that good one. They quit biting the crankbait, I went right back to my Carolina rig. I don't care what they bite, I just want them to bite. So that's kind of always has been my promise to you guys, right? I'm not going to just get on here and say, ooh, look at the helicopter lure, you should buy this. I'm going to throw whatever I feel like is going to get me the best chance to get bit, which is also what I would feel like is going to get you the best chance to get bit. So, Strike King, Six Cents, I don't care who, Spro, I don't care whose stuff I'm throwing. I just want to get the bites and get the most bites and the biggest bites. So that's why you see me here start out with one and immediately flip to the other. And I might have done it the other way around. I might have thrown that Cloud 15 up there. They might not have bit it. I'd have thrown a 6XD up there. I'd have thrown a rock crawler up there. I'd have thrown a, I don't care whatever it is up there. If I can get those fish to fire on it, I want to do that and I want to catch them. So there you go. That's why you see me change crankbaits right in the middle of this. <sighs> Cannot tell you how many crankbaits that dude has saved. I'm going to put a link below. This is an older style one. I've, I've, the Hound Dog is the one to buy now. And I'll show you where to get it. But that is, that is such a lifesaver. That's a, you know, that's an $8 crankbait. That's an $8, 6 cents crankbait. And all I've done is put it on a loose rod that I shortened a little bit and an old, old reel that I had. Big, heavy line that I still backlash. That is so handy.
like to jerk the rod out of my hand. Well, that's a pretty good way to end the day right there. Ugh. You saw I caught them really good early on a frog. And then I backed out and I caught them on an A-rig, or an A-rig, on a, uh, a crankbait and dragon. And then I come on to another point, I caught a couple more dragons, and then I thought, well, I'm gonna throw at them cypress trees on that point right there, and guess what? One like to jerk the rod out of my hands. It's a fun day. I'll be real curious what my fish count was. It was pretty high, it's uh, 10 to 10. So, uh, short day, but a lot of fun. Ooh, I love Sam Rayburn. Why do you drive all the way to Sam Rayburn to go fishing? Why don't you fish Hubbard? Why don't you fish Rich and Chambers? This is why. Okay, so that's a wrap. Uh, as you see, it was a pretty fun morning. 31 fish, uh, including one last topwater fish right there at the end of the day. It was just a perfect way to end the day. So thanks for tuning in. We're back down there again. Uh, by the time you see this, we'll be back down there. So I'll be getting some more video up for you guys. And I appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate you sharing. And uh, you know what? I need to throw one more thing in here. I just realized. I'm going to talk. I'm going to do another off topic. But I did have a chance. I ran into. I was first one in the water the other morning at the at the Hank's Creek boat Hank Creek's boat ramp, uh, three or four trips ago. And the second guy in the water was Todd Driscoll, uh, Texas Park and Wildlife field biologist there at the uh, at the Brooklyn uh, TPW uh, facility, but also an avid tournament fisherman. And we got to talking, and he did update me. So on the Toledo Bend fish study, once that water normalized, they've now inserted, and in, I, I want to say he told me 15 fish, but don't hold me to that. But they have a 100% survival rate. So they feel pretty confident at this point. The reason they lost so many of those fish when they tried to do the implant to do the tracking later, uh, earlier this year, that it was that uh, rapidly cooling water that was stressing those fish. And also, I can't wait to hear the results of this. He said they've already tracked fish that have traveled more than two miles from where they were caught. I think this may change the way we think about bass fishing in this particular study. I cannot wait to see more results out of this. And I may try to see if I can get Todd to sit down with us and tell us what they're seeing as they go through this process. I don't know that he'll give us that, but I'm going to ask. So if I can get that, I'll get it for you guys. So again, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you guys again. By the time you see this, we'll be back down fishing, and I'll get some more video up for you guys. Thanks.